the home. I don't know if I'm a few minutes early because uh, the church bells just struck three. I'm painting outside today in my lovely little um, garden here in Yorkshire and I am being very inspired by flowers. I'm trying to get this um, little set up here so that you haven't got a big line across it but oh, just the way the light's falling I don't know if I'm going to be able to do much with that but I thought I'd sit down and paint today with you just because this table's quite low. <laughs> Hi everyone. Hello. Hope you can hear me okay. Hi Tracy. Could you just give me a thumbs up if the sound's all right? Yeah, I hope it's okay. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining. Sorry about the line there. I've been trying to move my easel around. Maybe I can just bring it forward a little bit. Hang on. It's kind of a little bit better, isn't it? Oh, shift myself up here. <laughs> Today, I'm going to paint some flowers. Hi, Mina. Is the sound okay? Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Can you just give me a... Th oh, thanks. Oh, sorry about the line there. This is beautiful sunshine, isn't it? <laughs> thanks all. Right. So, hi, children. I want to say hello, you lot. I hope that you're all still enjoying yourself and you're finding lots to do. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Um, and I wanted to just check in with you, make sure you're all okay. And i um, wondering if you're enjoying your painting. We've been doing quite a lot of painting. I think this is now probably about our 14th session, isn't it? So I think you all must be getting quite good by now. Hmm? So I'd love to see what you're painting. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. And again, this is for you. This is for primary age children, little children, but also, of course, and mums and dads want to join in. That's wonderful as well. And anybody else who wants to join in, wonderful. So what we're going to start with is a bit of cardboard here and whoop, ha, a bit of wind. I do like painting on cardboard, as you know. I'm going to put my paints down there. I get them when I need them because it's free usually and um, there's lots of it about. Plus, I just like, I like the texture of it. I like the way the paint dries quick on it. And um, I like as well about it that you can paint on it, draw on it, and not worry about making a mistake on it. I'm looking now around for my chalk. Hang on. And I've got, there it is, here it is. So today, this is a flower painting that I've been working on earlier, folks. But for this class, this today, I'm going to be looking at colour mixing on flowers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eileen. Hi. I'm really glad about that. Right then. So, you know, I like to use simple shapes when I'm making up uh, my pictures and flowers are no exception. Now, you might think when you look at flowers, you might think that all flowers are going to be kind of, you know, like we tend to draw them, big petals like that. Well, some are, but a lot of them, they genuinely aren't, are they? So I've got a little wet cloth here, a bit of a wet um, kitchen roll. So I'm just going to wipe that off. That's the beauty of chalk on charcoal there, isn't it? So, there's a, you know, you can just play about, you can make a mark and not worry about it at all. My flowers today, I'm going to do them, um, you know, as I say, using simple shapes, but I'm going to do them with triangles, yep. Yeah? So I'm going to have one triangle there. Can you see me? Yeah, you can see that good, can't you? And another one next to it. Another one next to it. And another one at the top there. Can you see I've done that slightly smaller? Then this one at the side. And then another one in there. And I'm going to just do a few of those and quite big because what I want to do into each of these. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> uh, hi, Greg. What I want to do into each of these flowers, each of these little triangles is mix some beautiful, beautiful colours. I want to demonstrate a little bit of that. So if you can do yourself some triangles, some flowers. Here's another one I'm going to do. There's a triangle. Can you see that one? That little triangle there? Yep. So I'll do another one opposite it like that. And then another one underneath it. These are quite long triangles, aren't they? So you can make your triangles different shapes. 
there's one flower, there's two. You can see I haven't put the petals all the way around because sometimes when you look at flowers, you know, they, they, they droop down, they don't have any at the top, maybe they'll just have one or two at the top. Other flowers could be like this, couldn't they? Just doing triangles, can you see? That way, like that, yeah? One, two, three triangles like that, and then that can have a stalk as well, can't it? And that stalk, that stem, can go behind that triangle and that one. This one should have a, a stem as well. And this one, this one I'm gonna do like a bendy, nice bendy stem. So I've got three nice big flowers there. I'm gonna put another one in here. And again, just use those triangles, yeah? Don't worry if you go over lines, because with chalk you can just rub it out. That's great. How are we doing? Yeah, two. I'm just gonna have three petals on that one, I think, and then another stalk coming down. And I think one more in here, don't you? There's another triangle, one more triangle, another triangle, another triangle. That one can have four triangles, all meeting together in the middle and a stalk coming down. Wow, that's nice. That's my outlines done, isn't it? Right then, so what I'm gonna do now is, Grab some black paint. Oh, wait there a minute because I haven't brought any black paint downstairs. This is the thing with painting outside in the garden. You have to make sure that you brought everything with you, which I haven't. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Are you all still there? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right, I'm using um, something called a fluid paint today. Okay, this is an acrylic paint, but it's, it's what they call fluid. It's a bit runnier. So if you wanted to do this, uh, make a fluid paint, you could do so just by putting a little bit of paint out and then putting a little bit of water with it, mixing some water in, and it would become fluid like this. I'm using as well, you know that I like to use quite a thick brush, don't I? This one is what we call an angle brush, so it's just cut at an angle. Mm. Usually I use flat ones, which are, would be cut just across like that, but they'd be flat like that, so when you see them edge on, they're quite narrow. So you can do narrow lines with those, or you can do big areas, you can colour big areas in. Today as well, I'm using um, a bit of card here like that, just to put a little bit of paint out on. Usually I don't do that, do I? Because it, I think it's quite wasteful sometimes. And I don't like to have to throw paint away. But today I'm doing it because I'm gonna be mixing colors at some point, which is really interesting, isn't it? So I've just put a little bit of water on my brush. Just getting a little bit of that black then. And I'm just gonna do these outlines, yeah. So look how fine a line I can do with that, even though it's a big, thick brush. That's because I'm just using the edge of it, like that, the edge of the brush, yeah? So these are the brushes that I really like. There we are. I, I'm not being too careful, because I quite like it when things are a little bit messy on the edges, you know, don't quite join up. I think it makes it a bit more interesting. I didn't need too much paint out, did I? Because there's not much that I needed to um, outline here. I'm just going over the, the chalky bits. Just got a little bit more water on my brush there because it can dry out sometimes, especially when you're painting on top of chalk because the chalk will absorb quite a bit of the water. And if you can keep these lines quite thin, you know, not too thick with paint, it means they'll dry quickly and we'll be able to colour them in quickly get round to doing it sooner because um, if they were all very thick if those lines were very thick they'd still be wet when we try to color into the shapes and then if it's still wet you'd get a little bit of the black paint into our nice colors and we don't really want that today 
we want to keep the colours nice and bright and we can keep them nice and bright by not getting black paint in them so what we need to do is make sure this the black paint that we're doing now is nice and dry before we paint into it so you can do that by uh, leaving it for a little while so it dry putting it on really thin like I am or you can dry it with a hair dryer as long as it's quite uh, quite dry when you paint on top of it did you see how just adding a little bit of water to that paint <laughs> hi Becca <laughs> hi Jack <laughs> yes well uh, very well thank you so just adding a little bit of water to that paint helped it all um, go on nice and smoothly and it's it's dry already but look I've got a little bit of black paint left on my brush so what do you think I think up here I would draw a what do you think this is going to be that's like an egg shape isn't it there and then a circle yeah and then two more little egg shapey bits yeah and maybe some black stripes you getting it yet a little bit and two little uh, eyes uh, and a little tail yeah B there he is right let's just wipe that brush in fact I'm gonna give that brush a good clean because I don't want my colors mixed up today no. okay so we're going to we've got some really nice flowers there we've got one two three four five beautiful flowers you could fill your cardboard with flowers there Hello, Angela. Hi. Hi from Canada. Oh, hello there. Welcome to Yorkshire. This is a Yorkshire garden. <laughs> this is literally a little two up, two down um, terrace that I live in here. And this is the width of the yard. I'm sitting against one wall here and that's the other side. But how grateful am I outside in the sun? It is, isn't it? I was just thinking to myself, you know, it's you can have it just three colors you know and a bit of cardboard and it's more than enough and uh, you know if you have that sort of attitude of uh, the attitude of gratitude it just makes you feel so much better it really does right that's nice and dry so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to wipe those chalk lines off you know and it's always quite a bit of magic for me when that when i rub the chalk lines off because i start to see what the outline looks like and then I can colour it in. When I um, when I started getting, um, I don't want to say, quite well known as a painter I suppose, um, and I'd be interviewed and people would be asking me, um, what's, what's your style of painting? What do you call your style of painting? And because I hadn't really been, well, I hadn't had any um, proper training, you know, I'd not um, been to university or and I'd not really studied, I just did it. I used to say, well, I call it colouring in, <laughs> so I still do. Hi, Melanie from Wales, yes. <laughs> it's lovely, isn't it, this little garden? I know. It was, oh, <laughs> till a week ago, it was just literally a yard with a, a mop bucket in and things, but it's, I love it now, I love it couple of plants uh, and it's it's beautiful right then so we're going to do lots of beautiful colors in here because I say I'm really inspired by these paint uh, plants the flowers so have you all got a yellow and have you all got a red hey Katie hello <laughs> welcome to your your garden <laughs> have you all got a yellow and have you all got a red and have you all got a blue and have you all got a white good Okay, I am um, today, this is, um, oh, this is from um, the oven, yeah, I was not doing any baking, but, <laughs> but I was doing lots of painting, hi Ali, <laughs> and um, so I decided that the oven tray would be better used as a paint tray, so here I've got two different yellows, okay, so I've got, mm -mm, I've got something, Got some more paints over here as well. This is called um, an, it's an azo yellow, so it's quite an orangey yellow. And again, these this is just a fluid acrylic. You know, it's a bit drippier than than these ones. And then I've got my process yellow. So I've got two yellows. Today I've got two blues as well. 
Hello, Paul. Hi, Paul. Nice to see you. Um, I've got a process cyan, those process colours that I told you about. They're lovely. So that's a bright blue. And then I've got something called ultramarine blue. And then I've got a magenta, that pinky red, yeah. And then I've got something called a naphthol red. It's really smart, isn't it? So they're just a bit different. Look, you can see how they're both red, but they're both a bit different, aren't they? So we're just going to explore mixing up some colours using those two different blues, two different yellows and two different reds. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to get some really, really amazing colour shifts there. Right. Now then, you're going to think of, you're all going to think I've gone a bit mad today because usually I say don't put any paint out on your palette because it's wasteful and you'll throw it in the bin and only put out as much as you want to use. But today I'm going to say put paint on a palette. Hi Mo, <laughs> thank you. And be generous with your paint, okay? Today we're just going to celebrate the colour and we're going to play today. We're going to play at making some nice colour. I've got some white here as well. Where's that gone? It is here. Where's the black? Where's the white? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. So instead of using that bit of card I was using, I'm just going to mix colours onto here. Hi, Lisa. And um, I'm going to start with a blob of white. Look, oh gosh, how nice that. You could almost eat it, couldn't you? Don't, don't eat it though. Forget I said that. Scrub that bit, kids. Okay? You should never, ever, ever, ever eat paint because it's made up of things that would not be good for you. It might smell really nice and feel really nice. Hi, Wilma. But you should not eat it. Right, so I've got a bit of white there, yeah? A little bit of water on that as well. I'm just going to put a blob in the middle of each of these, okay? Now, they're not... And this one isn't in the, well, it's kind of in the middle because this flower, can you see the leaves are just hanging down on it? And the same with that. So it is, it's where that centre of the flower would be, isn't it? You know, that middle bit there. So just a little bit of white into each of them and then we'll get on with looking at some really nice colour mixes. So to start with, I'm just going to put my blue aside there and I'm going to stick with my red to start with, okay? So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of red out there. There we go. And a tiny bit of one of the yellows. So I've chosen one of the reds and one of the yellows and I'm putting them out there. I'll lift that up to show you now. Get rid of those. And that bit of charcoal. There it is. Can you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Hi Fiona! <laughs> so I've got a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow there, a little bit of white. Okay, I've already got a bit of white on my brush. So I'm just going to now get, I'm just going to um, wipe that brush off. Actually, I've got a bit much white on there. I'm not going to mix the colour um, on the tray. I'm going to mix it on the flower. I think that's more interesting. So. This is a great way of learning about your paints and what colours you can mix. Okay, so if you start and follow me, yeah, if you're watching this later, because this way you'll make some nice bright colours, uh, nice lovely colour mixes, yeah. So I'm putting the red, one of the reds, just on the outside of the petal of that flower. That's the red, that's the thing, the red they call naphthol red, and it's one of my favourite reds for mixing with. Is. And without cleaning my brush then, hi Katie, <laughs> I'm in your garden. <laughs> yeah, oh, Katie's at work and um, we rent the house here from her. So <laughs> it's a bit sad she's at work and we're in the garden. So with um, getting a bit of that yellow now, that Nicolazo yellow, and I'm working then from the middle of that flower then outwards. Look at those colours already. They're starting to look nice, aren't they? Yeah, so I'm coming out towards the red. I'm not worrying too much about where the lines are. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is get a little bit of the white, okay? <laughs> Hi, Vaughan and Hannah, hello. <laughs> a little bit of the white, yeah, and watch now. 
Now when I start to mix that white into there, look at those lovely colours that are coming on there. How lovely is that? And we're getting lines in that flower as well that look like petals, aren't we? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's like magic when that happens. That's the painting giving you a real gift. Look at those colours. Aren't they beautiful? Okay. So we're going to do that again now. I'm going to clean that brush really well in the water. Give it a real good clean. Wipe it off. Do the same with the um, other two colours that we've got. Do you remember we had another red? She says, looking behind here. Here it is. Mm -hmm. So that one's a more of a magenta red. And we had another yellow, didn't we? Yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. There they are. Ignore those two bits. Can you see those two? That's the other red and the other yellow. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so the same thing again. So I'm just going to start now with this one here. Okay, I'm going to the red on the outside of the petals, the furthest bit from the middle. That's the magenta red, isn't it? It's very pink. I wonder what kind of colours this will make when I add the yellow to it. Huh? around that outline being a little careful but not too worried about it just wipe that extra bit off there and then a bit of the yellow and start then in the middle with the yellow I'm just putting a blob of pure yellow right into that middle bit there wiping it off any too much I had on there and then I'm just going to blend that into the pink oh wow oh wow that looks so lovely what a nice colour Whoa, a nice colour. Oh, look at that. Look at that one. Huh? Compare it to that. Can you see how different they are? Mm hmm. But what do you think would happen now if I cleaned my brush again and used maybe. Oh, that red, that other red, the naphthol red, the post box red. If I put some of that out there again, because I've nearly run out. And then I did with this flower here, start on the edge again with the red, yeah. Outside of the leaf, right on the edge of it. Outside of the petal, sorry, on the edge of it. There we go. And then I'll wipe that off a bit. Even even the wet cloth that I've wiped the paint on looks good, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Rosemary. <laughs> you know the secret. <laughs> right then, and then I'm going to use that yellow, that bright primary yellow, the different yellow, okay? So this red here underneath, I'd use the, um, my first yellow. With this red, I'm using that second, my second yellow. So I'm starting in the middle there. Just get a bit of the pure color. So it just stays really yellow right in the middle and then I'm going to go back and just with that brush just mix it into the red and see how does that look. Do I like, oh wow, these are beautiful summer orange colours aren't they, look at that. Oh yes, I like that very much. But I think this one's my favourite, I really like that one. Okay, clean that brush off again. Right, now then. Let's try that the other way around. So with that pinky magenta colour, yeah, let's do the outside of this flower. So we've got lots of possibilities, haven't we? Even just with the two reds. Oh, could you hear that? That blackbird. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hello. <laughs> we've got lots of possibilities, even with just the um, magenta there, that pink and the two yellows and then the post box red and the two yellows we've got lots of different colors we can make right now i need a little bit of that other yellow where's it gone there you go there we are. i'm just going to dip my brush in that and start then into the middle there we go and it needs doesn't it do you remember a little bit of white in it to bring it alive that one. there we go when you add white to your colors just a little bit at a time I'll show you how I'm doing that here 
Can you see when you add white to that, it just, wow, just starts to bring it alive, doesn't it? Look at that. And you can mix those as much as you like to make some real nice oranges, you know, nice peachy colors. But if you start with putting your, your pink on or your red on first and then your yellow on and then gradually mix them, you know, you can get some really nice blends, some nice different colors. I'm just going back into that now, working on top of it. And this is another thing that acrylics are beautiful for. You can work into it back with the pink on top look how effective those are as leaves yeah okay uh -huh. those are looking really lovely aren't they now then so what about this last one hmm what do we think what should we do with that oh temptation to do what haven't i used okay there's one combination maybe no i think i've used them all so i'll just use the paint that's left so that's a bit of this bright red the naphthol red there on the edge, do you remember? Right on the edge of the flowers. Bright red. There we go. Lovely. The cardboard's gorgeous to paint on, isn't it? You know, it just stands up like that and absorbs the paint and provides a very nice background as well. Okay, so I'm going to put onto that, uh, I've got a little bit of this heavy body yellow, this one, this yellow. <laughs> oh thanks Mike <laughs> so a little bit of yellow then and that's going right in the middle start isn't it do you remember so we keep both the colors very separate to start with even though it's a little bit on my brush and it gets in now don't worry too much about that and do you remember when I've said about how we're painting when we're painting a flower we're thinking about the flower and how it grows aren't we how it grows and opens up outwards so our brush strokes are coming outwards like that aren't they they're coming out like something's growing like a flower's growing it's always good to think about what words you might associate with that flower like blooming and blossoming and being bright because when you think about the kind of words that associate <laughs> oh yes please Kate thanks <laughs> um we when you think about the kind of words you associate with what you're painting, it helps you It helps you get in the mindset for painting. So uh, what I've done is just got a little bit of white on there. And again, I'm just gonna come in, and I need a little bit of water because it's drying already that. Come in from the outside of that red into the yellow. So rather than rubbing up and down into it, I'm actually starting each time on the edge and just seeing if there's any a little bit of red that I can pick up. Need a little bit more white. There we go. So just feel your way along there. If you need to add a little bit of water, that's good. You know, just do that and then add a little bit more white if you need it. Blend all those colours together. If you leave it too long, of course, you won't be able to blend them because they'll be dry and then when they're dry, like you know they form a big plastic uh, layer don't they so that's dry now I wouldn't be able to blend it would I this one's still a little bit wet what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit more red onto there because I'm just enjoying playing with these colors now for those of you who've been watching me a long time with this you know about acrylics and know how to do it this is the next stage for you this is putting acrylics on in layers yeah so we're not just doing that bottom layer like that no we're gonna put another layer on top and every time we put a layer on top, even in the same colors, we build up depth in the painting and the painting becomes much more interesting and that's uh, it, it really much more fun. So well, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put more yellow in, yeah? And I'm doing this when it's almost dry, but not quite. So underneath there is almost dry. So it's just picking up a little bit of what's underneath. So that's another layer of yellow, but right, you know, I'm going right into the middle and coming out there. Yeah, and then I'm gonna put another layer of white on. So I just wipe my brush a bit, wet it, wiped it and wet it. A little bit of white coming out. out, out. So do you see how I'm putting that on? I'm coming from the middle outside, so it's, it's opening and it's blossoming. Now, 
Let's just do that with a couple more of those again so I'm going to use a bit more of that pink onto there so another layer this is when you start becoming like a proper artist when you start working in layers with your acrylics like this and can you see how I was doing that I was doing it so quickly you probably missed it but I'll just put another little bit of the pink out so I can show you the beauty of these brushes that I've been telling you about <laughs> this flat one like this yeah You've got that nice thin edge that I was showing you that you can do, you know, your edges with there, your outlines. And you've also got this nice big juicy fat bit there, which you can put on loads of lovely paint with. So I'm dipping this in my whoop, stay there, paint like that. Yeah, flat on like that. And this is why it's sometimes nice to put paint out. If you know you're going to use it, and you know you're not going to throw it away because you're going to do a big session of painting you can put a bit of paint out i'll let you and then you put it on flat like that can you see where my brush is flat like that and then you just pull that in and when you do it like that you get those nice lines on your flower like when you look at a, oh, that is so beautiful it's like velvety and soft but it's also got the lines on it, you know, where it's grown and where it's all pushed out. So put your painter on like that. And what I'm just going to do now to finish this little bit, get some water on my brush, a little bit of white. And I'm going to do the same, but from the middle. Yeah. So flat on. Look at that. Every time I do it, it's changing color, isn't it? So if I want that to go a bit more yellowy again, I just put a bit more yellow on my brush. But you're feeling like proper artists doing this now, aren't you? Hey. But again, you know, we're going back to it. We're all just those basic shapes, aren't we, that we started with, yeah? I'm just gonna do this, the same thing here again. It's a bit of red. So this is the second layer on this flower, yeah? Keeping in mind just those basic shapes all the time. There's the yellow on it yellow coming out from the middle and then finally a little bit of white mm -hmm. there we go right let's give that a clean and let's get on with the blue shall we <laughs> hello louisa from wiltshire hi and hello to will ed and james wow hey louisa Doing a great job there, Mum. Wow. Respect. This is nothing, I tell you. Okay, so I'm not I'm gonna mix the blue on the cardboard for the sky behind the flowers, like I usually do, because I know I'll be using quite a bit of that and I don't want to mix it in here. So I'm not gonna be wasteful with it. I'm just gonna put a bit on here like that, a little bit there and i think we're gonna have like we're gonna pretend we're laying in a field with flowers there so all we can see then is the flowers blowing about in the wind and the sky behind us so that means we'll have sky right down behind these yeah so just little bits of blue there and then of course i've got some white left on there so i'll use that there's the white a little bit of white as well mm -hmm. yeah there we go then start and i'm just using this brush again you know and what i'm thinking is fluffy clouds so i'm going to be putting it on like fluffily like that flat down like that and then just into all the paint oh and now look that bee has disappeared it's been and gone oh, boom boom sorry about that but i'm not going to worry about that with acrylic paints Quite often it's better and easier to paint over a little detail like that than wait till this is dry and then paint back on top of it. It makes a life a lot easier than going around it. And I'm all for making life easy. So I'm just scrubbing that in there, but I'm thinking fluffy clouds. Fluff, fluff, fluffy clouds. Here we go. And it just gives you a beautiful effect. I like to not paint right to the edges of things. Even when I'm painting proper paintings, like this one underneath, I just like to leave the edges a bit rough. There we go. Coming into there. 
Yeah, but still thinking fluffy clouds, you know. Try and make some different, um, sorry, try not to make, you know, it would be easy for me to do little lines like that in there, and that wouldn't work so well as trying to keep that fluffy, cloudy feeling. And if your paint starts to get a bit dry and you find it hard to be fluffy and cloudy, just put a bit of water in it, yeah, and that will help you. The sky is actually mostly water, isn't it? Surprisingly, it all stays up there, really. But that's what the clouds are doing, I guess. They're doing a good job keeping the water up there in the sky. Look how those reds and yellows are starting to really stand out against that background, yeah? Wonderful how those colours work together. And it, you just have to smile, you know? You can't help but be happy when you can see this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of paint down here still, so I should make the most of that and pull that up and into it. Yeah. Fluffy, fluffy. Try not to do just lines going down there. Try and keep the fluffiness of the clouds, you know. And like I said, don't worry about going over bits, you know. Like I'm going to go over the stems there of the flowers. Because when this is dry, which it will be in a minute, we can just repaint those stems. I'm not going to go over the petals because I've spent a lot of time getting those right. Oh, that was nice. I've got a little bit of red paint there on that one. There we go. A bit of water in there again. Try and keep that fluffy idea in your head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, very nice. You know, just a week now, when I was here painting last week um, in, inside, but with the window open, this you could hear so many birds because they'd all just fledged, you know, they'd all just come out of the nest, jumped out, and all their mums and dads were tweeting at them, and the babies were all tweeting away. But they're a lot quieter now. That week has gone. That was just that time. Oh, it's lovely to paint things from nature, isn't it? From outside, to be outside with nature if you can be. Always very good, very good. So that's my background done. Okay, let's just give that brush a little rinse off and a clean. And I'm going to uh, come back now with a blue, a bit of blue I need, just a little bit. Here and what colour do you think I would mix with the blue to get a nice green for some leaves? Ooh. Yeah, the yellow, and I've got a bit of yellow left there. Yeah. Just a little bit of blue I've put there, there's a little bit of yellow, and I am going to mix that there this time. Usually, like I said, I would do this on the painting, wouldn't I? But because I just want a little bit. And I just want to go over where those stems were, those flower stems. Do you remember when we put those on to start with? I'm just going to go over those. That's it. Okay. Because I've got some green left, I'm going to put a little bit of white into it. You know, we were looking at colour mixing, so always when you add a little bit of white to something, you'll get a really nice, what they call tints tint of the colour. So that's a really nice light green, isn't it there? A little bit more yellow in there. This is where you can start to have some fun. Look at that. Look at all those different greens you can get just by adding a little bit of white in. Hi Margaret! <laughs> oh, well it's all just going to be um, on this Facebook page. You can catch up. Don't worry about missing the beginning of it. As soon as this is, um, as soon as we've finished here, I'll just load it up. So what I'm going to do is, because I haven't actually drawn any leaves, I'm, and if I wanted to now, I could obviously. This is dry, so I could chalk on it, and I could draw the leaves, and then I could colour them in as usual. But I'm going to be really brave, and what I'm going to do is just like print them with the side of the brush, just like that, yeah. Because I think they look quite nice and all the way up this one as well, just randomly, you know, because leaves don't, when you look at something, they don't all grow the same way, do they? Some of them grow down, some outside. Mm. 
some grow two together so I'll just put a few of those in there like that just printing them on randomly and sometimes you know when you do things randomly you'll find something that you really really like sometimes you'll find something that you don't like but that's absolutely fine especially with acrylic paints because you just paint over it if you found something you don't like you just paint over it but with acrylic paints look I like really like that so I'm just going to do some more of it wow how's that and of course then our final little bit for today yeah <laughs> is a little bee again isn't it so the bee is black and yellow so I need a little bit of black paint there we are. and again I'm still just using this one brush for all of it yeah and I like I've just dipped a little bit of black paint there uh, I can remember what he was like, aren't you? He was like an egg shape, really, wasn't he? And then a little circle for his head, yeah. And uh, two little sticks for his feeler things. <laughs> There's a proper word for that. And uh, then kind of two little um, egg shapes again for wings, I think, yeah. Uh, a little tail, and then, of course, stripes. More black there. Okay. He looks like a very busy bee. Okay, I'm just going to draw a couple of lines in his wings there. And then I need to clean that brush quite well because he just needs a bit of yellow on him, doesn't he? Because, oh, I don't know whether you've looked at bees at all, but I've seen some beautiful bees, some that are really like dark orange, and I've seen some that are real bright yellow and fluffy and some that, that look mostly black. So you can have whatever color you like, but I think generally, you know, it, they do have like a bit of a stripy, furry body, don't they? There we go, yeah. He's been very, very, very busy collecting pollen from these flowers. So just in the middle of these little flowers, just as a final thing, these little white bits, I'm just gonna put some tiny little yellow dots there. Can you see? just to look like the pollen for the bee to get, catch. And the bee, of course, lands on there, takes that pollen, and you might have seen some bees when they're running around, flying around, they've got the legs where they collect the pollen, they look like they've got little trousers on, little yellowy orange trousers on, that's all pollen. So when they go from one flower to the other, they pick up the pollen on their furry legs and then when they fly onto another flower, they take the pollen from one flower to another, and that's what fertilizes the flower and makes the flower able to make seeds for next year's flowers. Pretty clever, huh? <laughs> there we go. That is today's little flower painting done, and we've done some beautiful color mixing there. So why don't you see if you've got two different reds, two different yellows, and some white and black and a bit of blue there. Why don't you see how many lovely pinks and oranges that you could make, yeah? And don't forget, show me your paintings, tell me how you're getting on, leave some comments for me. I really love to know um, that you've been enjoying it and that it's still useful for me to be doing this for you all because I'm really enjoying my Wednesday afternoons with you. I hope that you're enjoying it too. You're more than welcome, Aileen, and I can't wait to be back in beautiful Pembrokeshire. <laughs> it's lovely. Okay, right. Um, now then, what have we got coming up? Chill and chat for adults, talking about um, painting on Monday nights, a little demo maybe. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Mo. Um, so, chill and chat, six o'clock on this Facebook page here. Everybody's welcome. You know we'll just have a little demo thanks rosemary and a chat about anything art related that's inspired us this week next wednesday again then at three o'clock this is going to be available yeah oh. <laughs> thanks louise that would be lovely to see it thanks Anne. Uh, okay so have a great week everybody kids do that homework but most of all make sure that you are smiling and having a lovely time okay See you later. Bye.